Hello and God bless. Thank you for watching. What I want to talk about now is um, how the Noah story connects to all of uh, the previous videos I've made, uh, including Joshua, the Days of Darkness, uh, the Bride, the Black, the Backslidden, and the Lost. I woke up on the 22nd of February 2014, and I woke up with the initial thought of that day. I almost spoke this thought; it was so prevalent in my mind to focus on Noah in Genesis and to study that. The Lord told me back in November of 2012 uh, when, I, when I finally committed my life to Him uh, wholeheartedly. He told me, Son, I've been wanting to show you many wondrous things, but you have not walked in righteousness. Walk with me in righteousness and I will show you many wonderful things. I have tried uh, through daily prayer to walk in righteousness and to seek truth and to seek uh, the ways that he would have me walk. And ever since that day, God has kept up his end of the bargain in my life and he has shown me uh, many wonderful things, signs in the heavens, uh, hidden things in the Bible. Um, and it's been an amazing walk and it's, it's very emotional for me. Doing the study, uh, when I find these things and, and when I search out these things, um, it's very glorious to, to um, it's very humbling uh, that I learned something and that there's something there more than just what's on the pages. Anyway, that's kind of the story what led me here. And I, I'm honestly under the belief that this is my last study for some reason. Um, I know time is short, and I'm sure most of my viewers out there know that time is very short. And it's only fitting that he would wrap this up with the story of Noah and the study of uh, how this all ties together. With that, I, it's kind of a somber tone uh, with what uh, lesson I have uh, for you to also search out. You can't just rely on what I put on this video or what I show you. Um, it's up to you to also open your Bible and, and do your uh, search as well. And perhaps you'll find more than I found, which would be wonderful. Um, so I'm going to start off in Matthew 24, 37. And the story behind this verse is Jesus has uh, pulled a few of his disciples together and they've asked him to look for um, a sign of his return. And Jesus sits down. I can just see him sitting down anyway and, and telling his disciples these things. He gets to Matthew 24, 37, he says, But as in the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Obviously, most of my viewers, I'm sure, are more mature in the Bible than most people. And if you look at the days of Noah, and the days of Noah were of heavy sin, that's the obvious. If you look a little deeper, there's a more sinister thing going on in the world. And I'm going to touch on this more sinister thing briefly. And uh, to give you a little bit of background, plus there's a little bit of information that that might be worthwhile to hear that the Lord has shown me. So Jesus gives us a clue in that verse to go back to look at the days of Noah and what they were like. Well the days of Noah begin in essentially Genesis uh, chapter 7. And if we go to Genesis chapter 7 and we look, uh, that is where the Lord actually comes unto Noah and says, Come thou, all thy house, into thy ark, for I have seen the righteousness before me in this generation. Uh, if you go to the chapter just prior to this, it's a very interesting chapter and has been up to many. Uh, many have debated this chapter. I find it no coincidence that the number this chapter is is chapter 6, which is the number of man. And it explains something uh, very sinister if you do your homework and take the time to, to look at it. And it says in this chapter, Now it came to pass... When the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, 
and they took wives for themselves, all of whom they chose. Okay, let's just look at that for just a second. So it says men begin to multiply. So people, men, atoms, all right, whatever you want to call, multiplying the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, which is nothing strange. Uh, so men and, and uh, women are cohabitating, and daughters are obviously being born, as well as other sons. And then it says that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, okay, that they were beautiful. So who are the sons of God? Well, the sons of God, if you look in the original Hebrew, is Beni Ha Elohim, which is angel, direct creations of God. All right, these are God made angels as a direct creation. We are sons of Adam. All right, we are Adam, uh, Adams. We are not direct creations of God. God created the first human, which is Adam, and then also, as we know, created Eve. And since then, we have multiplied upon the face of the earth and habitated the earth. So if we look at this original text, so it says angels. So if we say, and the angels saw that the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took for wives all of them that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit not will strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be numbered 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. So now it, the Lord says, He's upset with man, he's grieved in his heart, uh, and his days shall be 120 years. And this is the time, I believe, from this point until the ark was complete. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God, same word, sons of God, when the angels came into the daughters of men, they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. I find that absolutely somber. I, that's, that's very sad. So everything that man thought was evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had man made, made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, beast, creeping thing, and the birds of the air. I'm sorry that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay? These are the fallen angels, the one-third that fell with Satan. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think most of the viewers here, like I said, understand this. These are the fallen angels. It's very plain. It's very straightforward if you look at the original text. Fallen angels came down and bore children with human people. Another good resource for this is the book of Enoch, where it takes this little verse and it goes in much greater depth. Um, some people like to argue that Enoch is a Gnostic text. Well, so is Jasher, and Jasher is also in the Bible, in the book of Joshua. If you look in Joshua, I don't have the verse off the top of my head, but it also says, um, references the book of Jasher. So... You know, let the Lord lead you. Don't let this information lead you, but go to the Lord about it, okay, if you have a hard time understanding this. But this is what happened. This was going on right before the flood, and I believe this is also going on now at a much more um, scientific level. Uh, and then we'll get into that in just a second. Here it was, you got to understand in Genesis 3.15, the Lord speaks of, and I'm, I'm going to jump there real quick and read it to you. Um, in Genesis 3.15, the sin has just occurred, and the Lord comes down and he addresses all three parties involved. He addresses Adam, he addresses Eve, and he addresses Satan. And this is what he says to Satan, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, God is giving Satan a war declaration. In other words, I will send somebody to fix this. This there is hope. There there will be hope, and I will fix this. And he does, and you, and that's the whole Bible. I mean, you can see Satan make a move. I mean, there's famine, and then God makes a move. He moves them to Egypt. They get enslaved in Egypt. There's a Satan move. Uh, God gets them out through causing the plagues in Egypt. That's a God move. Uh, just as Jesus was being born, Herod was going to kill all the children. So what does God do? He takes uh, Mary and Joseph to Egypt, 
And then when Herod's gone and the people that want to kill the children, he comes back. So it's a God move, Satan move this whole this whole time. It's it's been that way throughout history. And uh, you know, it, Satan was defeated on the cross. However, we have to, you know, go to him in repentance and of course, you know, uh, declare him Lord of our life. So anyway, I don't I wanted to to bring that point up, but it's interesting to say that. Satan has a seed. It says, and I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed. So Satan has a seed, all right, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So that's just what I wanted to bring up in that point. If we go a little further, the Lord wanted me to concentrate on these two books. A lot of people um, thinks, think these two, thinks that these two books are the same. You have the Lamb's Book of Life. And you have the book of life or the living, okay? And what I want to talk about is these are two different books. And I believe the Lord is showing me um, there's a book of life which has everybody in it that was intended in creation. And then there's the book of salvation. And let's just examine these very briefly. The Bible does not mention being blotted out of the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. So when you accept Christ as your Savior and you make him Lord of your life, your name is written in blood in the Lamb's Book of Life. And it, and I'm just, you know, bear with me here, think about this. It seems to record those who accept the Lord's gift of salvation also includes the Old Testament saints, the Bride, and Tribulation saints. And you can look at these verses on your own, Revelation 13, 8. Names in the Lamb's Book of Life are necessary to enter into the New Jerusalem, Revelation 21, 27. The Lamb's Book of Life is only mentioned twice, okay? Then you go a little further, and you have the Book of the Living. And I think, folks, that this is an intended creation from God. And you're probably thinking, well, aren't all people an intended creation? We'll get to that in a, in a minute, okay? The Lord will blot names out of those who sin against him, Psalm 69, 28. All the names of everyone that will be born as written before the foundations of the world. Revelation 17, 8. Names will be blotted out if they die without obtaining the righteousness of God. Psalm 69, 28. There are names that are missing from the book of the living. They go directly to the lake of fire in Revelation 20, 15. Now, what I believe is... Um, those never recorded that those names that are missing out of the book of life are satanic DNA manipulations or simply clones. Now let's explore this a little bit. Now, what I think is, uh, what I, what, I don't want to show you that yet. <laughs> what I think is clear is the Bible talks about being blotted out of the book of the living and also not written in the book of the living. It seems to me that everyone is written initially in the book of living that is intended to be created from the foundations of the world. But then there are those that are found not even written. And the Bible is specific to where it says you can be blotted out if you look at 69.28 in Psalms. But it also says that you will not be written, those not written in the book of life. So why wouldn't Revelation 2015 say, and whosoever was blotted out of the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire? But that's not what it says. And it says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life will be cast in the lake of fire. So I'm under the impression, and once again, you have to do your homework, that the book of the living is intended creations of God, intended Adams. These people were meant to be born out of God's life plan. The ones that are missing, that are not written in the book, will go directly to the lake of fire. Also, if they are blotted out, or if they die without obtaining righteousness, will go to the lake of fire. That's my take on it. Um, some I've, I've researched this a lot. A lot of places think, think that these two books are the same. 
I just don't see how they can be the same. You got to remember, God keeps records for everything. I'm sure everything we say, do, uh, is recorded. Um, but I, I'm under the impression that this, these are two different books for one, and that the book of life or the book of the living is intended creations of God. Period. Now, if we go into Daniel 2 to 41, 43, and we talk about the fourth kingdom, okay, and it has iron and clay mixed in it, that the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, the kingdom will break in pieces and crush all others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partially of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom will be divided. Yet the strength of iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. And as you saw... Mixed with the ceramic clay, they will mingle themselves with the seed of men. All right? Who's they? Will mingle themselves with the seed of men. These are the fallen angels. This they refers to those in Genesis 6 that came and mingled with the seed of men before the flood. The same thing is going on today. They will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. Now, at this point, I would like to direct you to my Daniel 7 study. If you haven't seen those videos, you need to see those videos to understand what is going on. But I'm just going to go ahead and paraphrase what the Lord has led me to believe is if you look in Daniel 7, there are, there are the four beasts, okay? They are four specific kings. These kings are clones. And then you might ask, okay... So, why a clone? Why would Satan use a clone? Why would he want to clone other people? If he has... you got to remember, Satan wants to be like God. I will be like the Most High. My throne I will send above him. All right, It's in the Bible. Paraphrased, of course. Satan wants to be like God. God created it out of nothing. He spoke and it happened. Satan cannot do that. He has to take what God has created and manipulate it and turn it and change it so that he can have, uh, for lack of better words, his creation, which is not a creation. It's only a manipulation. Satan wants to create his own people, his own hybrids. All right? It's evident in Genesis 6. Nothing has changed. It has only gotten more refined. He is using DNA from personnel to take and create his own race of beings. And that's what they are. They are mingling with the seed of men in this kingdom. This kingdom will be fragile. It will be divided. It cannot stand. All right? So what Satan has done is he's made his own race. Why would he do that? Because they don't have a soul. The angels can occupy those beings because there's no fight for that soul. There is no God. There's, there's no angelic beings going to war for that person. So Satan can enter those beings or his fallen angels or whatever you want to call them and control them. And that's exactly what's happening right now. These beings or these manipulations are intermixed right now. They're in our education system. They're in, in the, the medical field. They're everywhere. So that's what's happened. And it is the days of Noah. We are living in the days of Noah. And that's exactly what happened prior to the flood. God had to destroy the earth because this had gotten out of control. And he needed to take eight clean souls aboard the, board, aboard the ark to fulfill his plan. So now where does this go from here to Noah? All right. Let's look at something. So the wonderful tie-in. Okay. Do your homework. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search out a matter. All right? And that's what the Lord has told me. He's like, you have to do your homework. You have to look. Okay? The ark rested, as many people know, Mount Ararat, which is a two-peak range in the country of Turkey. It shares a border with Iran. And you look at the etymology of Ararat, we find something very neat. Okay? Ararat 
was the name of the Proto-Armenian kingdom known as Utaru, Utartaru. The kingdom of this Utartaru is a term based in modern histori histori historiography for that Proto-Armenian region, speaking of the Iron Age that rose from that region. So Ararat is directly tied to the Iron Age. And that's what I wanted to show you initially. So the Lord had taken the ark. It could have rested in a million different places. And he puts it to rest on top of where the Iron Age was birthed, ending the destruction of the fallen angels. Until now. And that's where I'm going to close. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Please watch part two.